awesome. Hi everybody, I'm so glad to see you. My name is Allison Jensen and I'm the owner of Warren Diesel. I've got, um, I'm back in the studio here today just checking in and feeding the fish and watering our plants. And I thought while I was here, I would go live with you guys and talk about paper sculptures because I know you guys are stuck at home right now and maybe art supplies are kind of hard to come by. I know I looked at shipping on Amazon. I think it's gotten better since last week, but last week we were like, I was looking and I couldn't get stuff before May. I had a mild panic on that. So the nice thing about what we're going to talk about today is it's something you already have at home. It's going to use paper and everybody has paper, whether you have newspaper, you have junk mail, you have cardboard, you have, you know, old construction paper. I mean, even like old artworks that the kids have done and they're over it and it's just going in their recycle bin anyway, you can use it as a paper sculpture medium. So when we're talking about paper sculpture, we're talking about taking something that is flat and turning it into something that has dimension in 3D. So we're not actually gonna be making a sculpture today. Instead, what I wanna show you are all the different techniques that you can use. And I'm actually gonna make almost a reference board down here on my paper. And that way we could get a screenshot of it or um, I can even turn it into a graphic. Your kids can then use every technique that is used in this reference board to make sculptures of their own, okay? Um, for supplies today, in case you wanna follow along, I do have some pieces of paper. I grab different colors. It's not necessary, but I grabbed different colors because I thought it might be easier for you to see the techniques that I'm using. So I have some paper. I also have a pair of scissors. I have a pencil, which I'm going to need. I have a marker, which I'm really only going to use to label my techniques down here on this board, so you don't really need that. And I have a glue stick. Now, the nice thing about these techniques is any adhesive that you have will work, whether you have a glue stick, you have bottles of glue, you have tape. Um, you have rubber cement, you have hot glue, it will all work with any kind of glue that you have. Some of these will even work with no adhesive whatsoever. So that I've got as well. Um, and I think that's it. So you guys want to, want to jump right in here? Chat some more? No? Jump in? Cool. Glad you're here. Feel free to say hi in the comments. If you have questions, feel free to say hi. If you're watching the replay and you have questions, you can comment and I'll monitor it, I promise. So I'm going to tip you down. Let's see. Uh, I think anyway, I think turn you around. There it is. Tip you down. Whoop. Now you can see my board. This is my cheat sheet. See? There, yep. See, you just got a glimpse of it. You didn't get a lot of it because that's cheating. Um, but I want to make sure that, that you know I do have a plan for today. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm going to be working right here on my table so you guys can see me and I can still see in my camera. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our sheets of paper and our scissors. Um, and on this, um, my reason I put this paper down is I'm actually going to build my reference board here on the paper with all the different techniques and then I'll label them for you so that you can see them. If you're just jumping on, we're going over paper sculpture techniques. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do, let's start with the yellow paper, okay? And some scissors. I didn't pre-cut these mostly because Miss Nancy took the paper cutter. Um, otherwise, I was going to have some papers already cut, but this is more realistic anyway. So we'll start really basic and we'll get a little bit more complex. Okie doke. Let's start with just a really simple one. If we want to make this paper stand up, right, because it's flat right now. Whoops, sorry, knocked into my camera. It's flat right now, so we need to make it stand up. An easy way to do that is to turn it into a tube. All right, so let's do that. And then we'll get it, we'll get it put down here. So put a little bit of glue on this edge. I think I have, I don't know how many techniques I have for you. While I hold this, you know you gotta hold glue, otherwise it doesn't stick. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like 17 different techniques here, all right? So here's our first one. About 10 seconds and, and that will stand up. Now my tube could be different, right? It could have been longer, it could have been skinnier. Um, this one resembles maybe like a, a swimming pool, but um, maybe it could resemble a flower stem or something. So let's go ahead and write this one down. We're going to label it as a tube or a cylinder. That's probably more accurate, huh? This is hard because I have to spell now. Oh, my marker isn't working. Cylinder. There we go. Don't tell me if that's wrong. I don't want to know. Okay. Let's do one that's really, really similar to that. I'll do it in a different color just because it's pretty. Take our blue sheet of paper. I'm going to cut a very similar strip, but again, it could be taller, it could be shorter. Right. 
And instead of rolling into a tube this time, this time I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold it. I'll leave a little bit of an edge. Can you see that? i leave a little bit of an edge right there. Yeah. I'm going to fold that one. I'm going to fold it in half again. Right up to that edge. There we go. See? So I left a tab. You'll see in just a second. And I folded it up. We'll fold this tab over. Okay, and that way when I open it, I've got these creases already set. I'm going to re-crease them so they all go the right direction. And now, instead of a round cylinder, I have a square. Now, if I hadn't focused on making them equal, right, it would be a rectangle instead of a square. Here we go. Should we call that a cube? I think we should. Let's label that. Cube. I need a new marker. This one feels like it has glue on it or something. Okay. So we have two standing up pieces of paper. So fun. Like I said, could be skinnier or smaller. If my strip wouldn't have been as long, my tube would be smaller. If my strip would have been narrower, right, instead of as fat as it was, my tube would be shorter. All right, let's play with something else. What if I wanted these things to stand up? Let's talk about a technique to get, um, or like to adhere them to the paper. And this one, this one, we're gonna show a real easy way to do that. I'm gonna make a wall. So, got a square piece of the yellow paper. Similar to how I did the, the tab on the cube, I'm gonna fold this over. Now this wall has a foot on it, and the foot will give me something to stand on. If I don't want it, because it flops this direction, if we want to make it stable so that it doesn't flop that way, you can split your foot in half. So I give it just a little bit of a cut and I'll bend one of it one way and one of it the other way. And now I've got feet on both sides. Can you see that? Like that. Okay. Now that's a technique you can use to get anything to stand. I could have used it to get my, my cube, my cube or my cylinder a little bit taller. Right? So maybe I want this cylinder to quit jumping around on my paper. If I make little cuts, these are about a quarter of an inch up. All the way around. And then I fold these out. I could also fold them in. But just because it's easier for you guys to see, I'm going to fold it out. Do a little pinching here. A couple more. All right. Now I can put some glue on each one of these feet and press it into the table and then it will it'll stay there. I could do the exact same thing on the cube. So a lot of these techniques and these principles can be combined based on what you want them to do. All right. I think I got glue on all those. So let's press it down here and see if we can get it to stick. Ooh, I could press it into an oval shape if I wanted to, couldn't I? That would be that would be nutty. There we go. See now it's stuck to the table. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so I could do the same thing with the cube if I wanted to. I won't because I don't want to spend too much time with that. Let's do a different one. Let's do one. Ooh, I like this one. Let's do, I'm going to grab, this is my, my pretty purple sheet of paper, and I'm going to get one that's a rectangle. All of these techniques would work with different shapes too, but let's start with a rectangle. We're going to do some pleating. So those of you who remember folding like paper fans, you would know this. So remember we fold and flip it as you go. I'm trying to make sure my pleats are the same width every time I fold it. This is my one more. Okay, so here's my pleats. Now what could you do with a pleat? A pleated sheet of paper, right? I could cut feet in it just like I did for this one or for this one, and I could make him stand up and he could be a wall. Um, I could glue him here, 
and he's three-dimensional this way. See how he flops around? I could glue him here, and then maybe he could come up and he could connect onto my tube somehow. Come here, Tubey. Right there, like that. He, can, he could be like a staircase. Maybe he comes right here, and then he makes a bridge, and he comes back around, and he connects to the table like this. So lots of different things that you can do with the pleated, um, but just the fold itself gives it three dimensions. I'm going to put him... Let's put him up here because you guys can see him if I do that. Let me write that down. So this is pleats. Okay. All right, I'm going to show you two more things you can do with pleats because I think they're kind of fun. So the first thing is let's go ahead and cut ourselves. This one's going to need two identical pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it so that I get identical pieces. I'll go ahead and just... Cut this out. I'll show you something else you can make with pleats. We've got two now, and I'm going to pleat both of these. Now, this is one of those instances for this um, sculpture that it would probably be easier if I had, um, like, a staple or something, but I'm going to go ahead and try it with tape. All right, so there's my first one. Let's go ahead and pleat the next one. Try to make my pleats about the same for between both of these, but it doesn't matter if they aren't. It's not going to ruin the technique. It just maybe looks a little bit nicer, but all right, so I got my pleats all finished, and then I'm folding both of these in half. Like that. All right. So here's where the glue comes in, and this is where a stapler might be easier because um, if I staple it, it's guaranteed to stay. But let's give it a shot. Or tape. I'm going to use my tape just so I don't have to sit here and hold all this while you're while you're sitting here watching me. Okay. You can glue it if you want to, but you'd be you'd be here for a while. So let me just tape it. Um, if I wrap a piece of tape here in the back. It'll hold a little bit stronger. Okay, so there's one. That'd be really fun, right? I could just glue it right down, and I've got a fan that stands up. Let's do the next one. Ooh, my tape came off in a funny piece. All right, we'll tape this one together. What we're making here is like a pinwheel. That's what I call it anyway. Ooh. Come here, man. I drink a lot of coffee today, you guys. My hands are really shaky. There we go. Stick that tape in. That's the back anyway. All right, so I got two of these pinwheels, and then they can go together. Come here, you. So you put one side there and one side. Come on, stretch. If it stretches over here, you end up with a circle of a pinwheel. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tape that together here. Give me two seconds to get that done. I should have brought my stapler over, but that's in the office, and I'm not gonna make you wait while I go get it. But a stapler would definitely make this easy. It's a good thing I chose the dark purple because it kind of blends in with my tape. Or I guess I could have brought clear tape, huh? Let's see here. You can see why this is so good for fine motor skills. <laughs> you use my little pincher fingers, that's for sure. That's what we tell the kids. Use your pincher fingers. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Squish, squish, squish. And there's our little flower pinwheel sculptures. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? There we go. It could be the lid. All right, we'll put that up here with the pleats because they kind of go together. Let's label that as a pinwheel. Like I said, there are options with that. So if you just made one of them, you could get it to stand up like a like a sunburst, and that'd be a really pretty, um, really pretty sculpture. All right, I'm going to show you another one, and I'm going to try to get. I've got. Some of my papers are lighter weight than others, and this one works really well with lightweight paper. So I'm going to make sure I get some lightweight paper here. 
and hopefully it, it holds because it works the best with, um, with like tissue paper. But. So this one I'm going to eyeball into squares and I know it won't be perfect, but the nice thing about pretty much everything I do is it doesn't have to be perfect. So a little bit more of a rectangle. We'll go with it. All right, I've got four squares of paper. And this one we are also gonna pleat. I'm gonna make some bigger pleats on this one because um, it'll be less likely that my paper rips that way. Yeah, there we go, maybe. Ooh, I don't know, man, this might not work. I might have to go get me some tissue paper to show you this one. Yeah. Well, we'll give it a shot, right? Worst that happens is we're on Facebook Live and you guys can be like, see, she's not perfect. All right, so I'm gonna make sure these get pleated all the same way. If they were all tissue papers, I could totally fold them together, but I feel like since they're not, I need to, there we go, we'll go with that. We'll just do the, the three, because if I go with the four, um, I'm afraid they'll break. Let me go get my stapler. Two seconds, guys. Oh, you know what? Maybe I've got one in my drawer here. Let's find out. It's one of those things. You guys have anything in your house that you can never find? For us, it's the staplers. They're always missing or they're out of staples, like that one. I know mine in the office has staples, though. So. Two seconds. Okay, that was probably more than two, but it was close, right? You have to admit. All right, so here's my my uh, pleated folds of multiple papers. I'm gonna put a staple right in the middle. I'm gonna fan this out. This is where tissue paper works better. Now, if you lift these papers up, they fight against the staple. Thank you for saying hi. Hi, Dixie. It's good to see you. They fight against the staple, right? It creates a lot of tension against the folds. So you can pull these to the top. And what we're making is almost like a, a flower or a rose because it cups together. Whoop, that one ripped. Not the plan, but that's okay. They make really pretty tissue paper flowers if you do this. Can get one more. Pull. They kind of come around. So you've got a rose. So we'll put that one up here, and if I can find my marker, we will label that. Oh, you guys can't see it. We'll put it right here. We'll label it as a rose. All right, let's do something totally different than pleating. Let's do something with these long strips. So I'm going to cut myself some long strips of paper. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of quilling, but it's a way of painting and filling. Painting is not the right word, but it, it makes a two-dimensional artwork, something flat but out of rolled paper. So you want to roll it really, really tightly. So just bring it in here. Again, good for those fine motor skills to make a tight roll. And if any of my kids are watching, you guys, this is this is something that um, like these techniques could make endless pieces of art while you guys are home. So I'm gonna hold that quill kind of right there. Whoops, stay. Borrow one of these pieces of paper. I'm gonna give myself something to fill my quilled shape with. So this is gonna be like a teardrop like an eyeball. Let's see. Stay. 
and then I can fill it and make this a little bit smaller. That way my purple swirl doesn't get lost in there. Yeah, let's fill it again. So here I am, I'm rolling another one. And you can roll different um, sizes of paper, different spirals of paper, different colors of paper. And you'll fill in your spaces, but you can see like if you were to make a picture out of walls like this, where it's almost like the outline of your drawing, and then you fill it with rolls of colored paper, like you're coloring it in or painting it. It's a really fun technique. There's one. We'll do one more. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Should we zoom in? There's a better view. It's kind of a funny, kind of a, oh yeah, well look, I can zoom you in. That's pretty cool. I didn't know I could do that. Ooh, that's a really close up picture of my fingers though. Zoom me back out. I feel like I need music, but if I give put music on, then Facebook doesn't doesn't give you any audio. So you just have to put up with me talking. All right. So that is an example of quilling. And if I were doing this more detailed, you guys, I would I would fill in each of these little spaces with smaller, tighter coils, and then in here maybe three or four tight coils, and that would be that would be quilling. And you would anchor these walls using like um, like this technique up here the, with the feet. We didn't label that one. Feet. All right, should we do something else? Let's do another one with strips. I'm going to get out this light blue because I haven't used that one. We'll go back to some simple techniques. Here I've got a strip of paper. I'm going to go ahead and split it in half so it's not quite so long. And we're going to give it feet on one side and feet on the other side. And we're going to turn this into a bridge. So right now it's flat, right? But we're going to make it three-dimensional. So I put a little bit of glue on both of my feet. And I'm going to stand it up. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, ten. We usually tell the kids to hold it for ten. We'll bring this back over. That's one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and that is an example of a bridge. There's lots of different directions that you could go with this, right? This bridge could have had pleats in it. It could have folds in it. Um, it can have quills stacked on top of it. So as you combine these techniques, they do different things. Let me label this as a bridge. You ready for the next one? Let me get a, a nice long-ish strip of paper here. Most of my strips are pretty consistent in size, but please remember that you can do this with, with any size. It could be really short, it could be really skinny. Um, just for demonstrating purposes, I'm trying to keep it somewhat consistent. Here I'm going to use a pencil, and I'm going to wrap it as tightly as I can against the pencil. And the cool thing about the paper is it will hold this shape. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to fold myself a little foot. That's so that it can stand up, just like our wall over here. And then I'll let it go. And we have a coil. Like that, right? See how it keeps that shape? So then I'll go ahead and I'll put some glue right here. And this is like, so we're going to call this spiral number one because we're going to do a bunch of stuff with spirals so this is just spiral number one and i'll put it down here Woo. stay can you see that he's kind of there we go Woo. he's stuck to my fingers <laughs> all right let's label him 
spiral number one. Should we make a different one? This one's going to be more like a candy cane spiral. So, got my paper here, and I'm going to give myself a nice long strip. Again with my pencil, but this time instead of wrapping it straight on, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it a little bit, and we're going to wrap it like it's a candy cane. See, so it wraps all the way down the pencil. I like the pencil, you guys, because it's not a perfectly round shape, and I feel like it kind of like puts some creases in there. It really holds on. Look at that. That looks like my hair. All right, so we'll go ahead and tape this one down. I'll give it, I'll give it a foot so it stands up a little bit better. You wouldn't need one necessarily. It's three dimensional even without it, but this way it kind of pops off the paper. So we'll call this one spiral number two, right? All right, I'll show you one more spiral, but this one doesn't start with a strip of paper. This one is going to start with a circle. So let me back you up so you can see what I'm doing right here. I'm going to use my roll of tape just because it's really handy right now. I'll trace myself a quick circle. So that's easier than you sitting here waiting for me to draw one. Okay, I have my spiral all cut out. And now, or my circle, I'm sorry, now I'm going to turn it into a spiral. Go around and around and around. This is a fun um, brain teaser for the kids if you tell them to give them a circle of paper and tell them to turn it into the longest piece of paper they can. This is, this is the trick. This is how you do it. going turns into a snake it's also really good for cutting skills if you have kids that need to work on cutting skills paper sculpture is where it is at all right so here's my really long piece look at that but if I take it I can actually glue it onto my paper and make it dimensional so let's see if I can see if I can get it to stick so I'll start with the tail of my snake here and put some glue on the back my fingers are starting to get kind of sticky we're just going to glue down the tail. Holds down there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, nine, ten. I just realized that I'm a little bit off screen for you, so let me scoot up. There you go. Okay, my finger's stuck. There we go. All right, and then I'll put a little bit of glue here, kind of on that center, the head of the snake. Okay. And we'll come over here and we'll stick it down. Hold it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we have our spiral. So this is our third spiral that we've done, right, as a building technique. Number three. So you could put one of these on top of a bridge, right? You could put one of these coming off of a bridge. I could put one of these coming off of the side of one of these cubes. Um, so there are lots of options in terms of incorporating all of these techniques together. All right, I just have a few more to show you. I want to get out two sheets of paper of different colors. So let's start with the yellow, and I'm just going to make myself a little rectangle. And then I'm going to grab um, a similar sized blue one. Doesn't need to be perfect, but close. Just for demonstrating, it's close. Not quite, but okay. So on my blue one, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and take and cut halfway up the middle. And then on my yellow one, I'm gonna go ahead and take it and I'm gonna cut halfway up the middle. You don't wanna cut all the way through it. So for this technique, I'm gonna take both of these notches and I'm gonna see if I can fit them together nice and snug and tight. And I might have to kind of play with it, right? So um, it, depending on what side I want this to sit on, if I want it to sit on this side, we're flush and even. But if I wanted it to sit on this side, I'd have to cut a little bit deeper. Can you see that? 
So there's this one. This is kind of as a way of joining your, your paper pieces. This is a really great method for joining, right? Because if I wanted to hook a, um, let's say a pleated one on top of this cube, I could use this technique. I would just cut up this one a little bit and down this one a little bit and fit them together. And they would stay together um, in that method. So it's a great way to join. So we're gonna call this a cross. That one also works with other shapes, so it doesn't have to be, um, here, let me get the yellow so you can see it. It doesn't have to be like that. So let's say I wanted um, a circle or an organic shape. Here's an organic shape. It's kind of a heart organic shape, right? If I want to attach this to my cube, I can cut to the middle and I can take my cube and cut here on the side and I can attach them with this method. Whoop, he stuck to my fingers because I got glue on them. All right, so that method of joining is really valuable. If I wanted to stick this on the table, I could cut feet on him, right? All right, let's talk about two more ways. I think I got two more. I want to do some fringe. We'll do it with this one. So fringe is a great way to add um, texture and dimension to your paper. So I'm gonna do some fringe on here. This by itself already adds dimension, right? Even if I were just to lay this flat on a piece of paper, it has dimension to it and texture to it, or I can combine it with any of the other techniques. So if I were to fringe this and then put it into a cylinder shape, right, where I roll it into a cylinder, I can do that. If I want to fringe it and then roll it into a coil, I can do that. If I want to fringe it and then give it a foot so that it sits down, kind of like this wall up here, I can do that. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and roll it into kind of a coil, just so it stands up here on my paper. So or not a coil, a cylinder. So we'll wrap it around my finger like this. If you want to, you can take these fringes and you can treat them like our quills or our first spiral that we made, right? And you can roll these down a pencil and they will stay rolled outward. This is a fun way to make paper flowers, too. So there's our fringe. Put that up top here and go ahead and label that if I can find my marker. Here it is. So there is our fringe. All right, one more and then I'll sign off from you, okay? Let's go ahead and let's make another big circle. I don't know if you guys can see where I'm working anymore. Let's see. I'm going to back you up so you can see me. All right, so here's a circle. This time I'll go on the outside so I get it a little bit bigger. And you could do this with a square too, but just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and do it on a circle shape. Let me get this somewhat cut out. We haven't even talked about ways that you can add interest by, um, by not cutting in a straight line, right? If I had a pair of... Um, zigzag scissors or crazy cut scissors or if I were to cut scallops into this edge or you know chop it up into funny shapes it would be very very different than, than this nice round shape. I'm gonna go ahead and take it and I'm gonna cut it in up the middle and this time I'm gonna roll it into a cone shape so it becomes like a, a cone depending on how right Depending on how flat I want my cone to be, I could put this down and it would be a nice flat cone. The tighter, the tighter, the tighter I wind it, um, the taller and, and narrower my cone becomes. And just for time reasons, I'm going to use my stapler here. And that becomes our cone. If I needed my cone to stay right here, 
I could use this technique, right, on my feet if I wanted it on a flat surface. I could cut up the top and put it on another shape similar to how I did the cube where you're actually doing kind of the cross technique. Um, so you have lots of options here. So we'll go ahead and label that as our cone. All right. And there you have it. Look at those, all those sculpture building techniques that you can do. So just to review, we've got some different things you can do with pleats. We've got, um, let's see, what's this? This one's our fringe. You guys, I'm sorry, I'm on a funny tripod here. I've got the fringe one. I've got the cone one. I've got um, a tube or a cylinder, a cube or any rectangular shape. And if I should have mentioned, if you fold it three times, you have a triangle, right? Fold it six times, you have a six-sided shape, whatever that's called, um, H-sided shape, octagon, depending on how many folds you have, right? We got my feet, I got my cross technique, I've got this really fun flower technique, the quilling technique, which is a way to fill space, um, I've got the bridge. The bridge can also have pleats in it or stair steps. It can have a twist in it, right? Um, I've got a couple different spiral techniques, this one here, oops, get down here so you can really see it, right there. Um, I've got this one right here, I didn't attach this other side, but I could have, right? I could have stuck it down. Or I could have stuck it onto something else, right? Depending on where it wanted to travel. And then I've got this last one that was our circle one that we cut into a spiral and hooked on both sides. So, and like I said, it could hook here and then hook up to the bridge or hook here and hook over to quilling. So there's lots of different options that you can do. And that's it. So I'm going to, unless there's any questions, I'll sign off. But I hope you guys have fun with just these techniques here. Um, if you do make a paper sculpture project, I would love to see it. Please know that you don't have to have a plan in mind when you make your paper sculpture. It can just be playing and filling a board. Um, it can be very abstract. It doesn't have to be that you're making anything. Um, you can just be playing with these techniques and filling it. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Take pictures if you do it. I want to see it. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and I will talk to you soon.